Mu pyojong, kitaru gojong, mongol bunga imi yamen sengak go ganjong, kitaru moa moa gadaru yuji tong i bodu, my gori my dola doa nail gi sao yo, na pego modu gachai oh yo, first up, so the next week even I'm the yo, the game channel boyo, and go kid boyo, na man oji. Hey dudes, and welcome back to the freaking channel. Today I am joining you here via voiceover because we are doing a little moving vlog. Oh my god, I can't believe I'm moving out of the space. So, I just thought that I'd like to share some of these lessons with you guys. Specifically, it'll be four lessons. And these lessons aren't going to be mind-blowing in any way. In fact, a lot of these are probably things that you've already heard or already know. And honestly, a lot of these lessons are things that I already knew going into this space, but I didn't really understand it enough or no one really explained it to me in order for me to want to implement it. So I'll be trying my best to explain why these lessons were so important for me and more specifically how they changed me as an artist and small business owner for the better. But, and that was a huge but just how I like them. Before I share these lessons with you guys, I want to quickly talk about another type of learning I've been doing all summer long with Skillshare, who are very kindly sponsoring this video. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide depth and breadth of topics ranging from illustration, graphic design, photography to music, marketing, and even productivity. Skillshare classes are taught by industry experts to share their tools, techniques, and professional journeys with the members. And there are classes in countless categories ranging from beginner to advanced so members can go from dabbler to pro in just a matter of hours personally i love using skillshare to just help me be a better small business owner because in truth i'm just out here winging it and taking some classes from industry experts is just incredibly helpful personally i've been looking to improve my youtube skills over the summer so i've been taking marquise brownlee's class on youtube success like why not just learn from the best right and the best part of this offer is that the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial to skillshare so if you want to try out any course, anything you want. It's absolutely free. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Number one on this list is manufacturing and product development. Up until I moved into this studio, I was basically making everything from home, sticker sheets, die cuts, even small prints, I was just starting to get manufactured. As a really teeny tiny business, I was really concerned with having too much inventory and wasting money on products that I wasn't sure was gonna be moving anywhere. And also quite honestly, I was just so horrible with project management that I had no like sense of idea of how to plan a drop properly. The idea of planning a drop more than like two weeks ahead of time was unfathomable and also really, really daunting. There's like some Something about having a really far away due date that makes me really scared. I prefer working in like really close due dates. And so with that kind of preference, it was really, really hard to imagine how I could manage manufacturing. Like the idea of having to sit down and IDA and draw ahead of time was not to be so princess bride about it, but inconceivable. I was just so used to drawing when I felt like it and then making a product and then dropping it like two weeks after. And that, that's actually generous. I would drop it like that week. So really everything about manufacturing was scary. I couldn't see the quality in real time. I'd have to negotiate and figure out pricing and I'd have to plan ahead of time to stay on top of managing my project. And I'd have to spend a decent amount of money to have inventory that I couldn't guarantee would move. But taking the jump has really changed my entire business model for the better. What really drove me to try out manufacturing and just like take the leap was that manufacturing everything from home myself was taking up so much of my time and also a lot of physical labor. Like I'm a pretty fit gal and I was starting to really hurt my body doing all the physical labor at home. You're crouching over all the time, you're on your feet all day. I actually developed plantar fasciitis from it, which is no fun. I was doing all the cutting, all the laminating, just like so much physical labor and it took up so much of my time. And I really had to ask myself like, am I an artist or am I like a sticker producer? So once I took the leap, I found that manufacturing actually forces me to create a lot of mini deadlines for myself, which is a lot more helpful for me. I have really bad ADHD and executive dysfunction and having mini deadlines is actually so much better than a deadline that's really far away and definitely better than a huge deadline really close up. It's almost like the kind of situation where you kind of just do it and then you learn along the way. Like, of course, you can look up videos and learn how to do it before you jump into it, but there's no better way of learning than just doing it yourself and reaching out to manufacturers and trying your hand at negotiating and to be honest negotiating is really easy because manufacturers want to work with you you guys are doing business with each other so it's all about asking for samples 
finding people who are easy to communicate with, and then just like comparing prices and telling your manufacturer that you like, like, hey, I got a better quote somewhere else. Can you work with me on this price? So if you're thinking about it, just like try it out on like a fake product or a product that you're trying to make right now to just get some practice. And once you do it one time, it's so easy to keep doing it. Also, the fear of cost has really gone away because I realized that manufacturing actually doesn't cost that much more, especially if you calculate your labor costs. I find that my time is most valuable thinking of ways to improve the business and also creating new art. So spending more money to free up that time is invaluable and well worth the investment. If you have more restrictions, like you need a lower MOQ or you don't have that much money to spend, it just means that you need to spend a little bit more time finding a manufacturer that's right for you. Finding a manufacturer is really not that hard, I promise you. We all have Google and price comping is basically just asking for quotes and seeing what's up. So the steps in manufacturing really are, you make your product, you research manufacturers and ask for quotes. Once you find a few quotes that you like, then you ask for samples. Usually they're free and you just have to pay for shipping. Then you receive your samples, you test them out, and then you go with the manufacturer that you like the best. If you're scared of getting scammed, make sure you read a lot of reviews. And if that doesn't give you peace of mind, then make sure you pay with like a credit card or PayPal where it's easy to get your money back from a scam. And while we're on the topic of expenses, let's move on to the second lesson that I learned, which is reinvesting is absolutely crucial for growth. And yes, I know we hear it all the time. It's kind of like an Odo situation, but you know, it's one of those things where it doesn't really hit until it hits. But like no one ever talks about how scary it is, especially at the beginning. And it feels like you're starting with nothing. Like literally, if you have no chunk of capital at the beginning, it's just so scary. It wasn't really until I moved into this space and got really serious about my business did I realize that it's really not so scary if you do things really slowly and you write everything down. As my business slowly grew in the studio, I realized having like bad tools and not enough space just really, really bogs you down and actually costs you more money in terms of like potential money. Like lack of efficiency slows you down in an almost exponential way when it comes to business. So when it comes to reinvesting, it doesn't mean just like buying everything that's like super nice right off the bat. It's all about sitting down and figuring out the pain points in your business. What specifically is really slowing you down the most and of those issues, which is most easily fixed? Once you figure out like which one is in the Venn diagram of worst issue plus most easily fixed, then you know where to put the money that, that you do have available and that will be your largest return on investment. Which also means that you need to keep really good track of all your expenses. It is absolutely crucial. If you don't know how much is coming in and coming out, then you don't know how much you have to spend. And girl, trust me, I know firsthand that it is really daunting to look at your money like that. But it's so important and honestly, once you do look at it, it is incredibly freeing to know exactly what you can do and what you can afford for your business. For me personally, the first two things that I reinvested in was for manufacturing and also for an editor. Otherwise, we would never get YouTube videos. And for the third lesson that I learned, which again might be like another really obvious one, but it just like didn't really take root or I didn't learn it for myself until I got into the studio space. And also I feel like no one ever really explained it to me in a way that resonated with me. So I just never believed them. <laughs> I'm just like a skeptic at heart. But the lesson was that sitting down and intentionally creating systems is going to be my number one driver of growth in this business. And again, it's kind of been like a theme of all the lessons, but it really just comes down to how I value my time, how I want to spend it and who I want to be. Not to be like super cheesy about it, but for the longest time, I just feel like I was floating around in my business, just putting out fires whenever they were popping up. Like I was just spending so much time doing things that didn't even make a huge difference in my business. And it was just so, so incredibly inefficient without intentional systems. Systems. And I wasn't like arting. I wasn't doing any drawing. I wasn't being creative. I was just like running a business and like, it's all technically my dream job. I'm running a little art business. I get to be an artist, but why am I miserable? Sitting down and figuring out all the main systems in your business, like manufacturing or paying taxes or creating a design process, or even like convention prep frees up so much of your mind so that you can think about important things or even just like think creatively. I was always just spending so much time thinking about my business that I never was able to like sit down and just be creative and find myself as an artist, quite honestly. Like even the simple little things of my business would bog me down as my business grew, like packing orders. For some reason, my order packing system was just a mess. Everything I needed was in a different area. So every 
time I packed just like one order, it would take like 30 minutes to do it because everything was just placed in a stupid spot. Like my user design of my office was so stupid. So even figuring out things like that, figuring out the pain points and packing an order, like, oh, what do I want to origami everything with tissue paper? Or do I just want to get like a nice little glassine baggie and just stick something into it? That kind of thinking just changes everything. So it's not like so scary to sit down and create a system. It's really just like writing down all your processes and then figuring out like where does it not make sense. And last but not least, and this is one that everyone and their mama is always saying, but comparison truly is a thief of joy. Not to be so cheesy, but it really is. Like it literally steals your happiness. And in the world of social media, especially as an artist, especially as a business owner, because that art is going to be what's making you money. There is just like a huge difference between market research and then obsessing over other people and then feeling bad about yourself. And the way that I learned to combat this is to spend less time on social media. And I know that's sound so stupid like everyone knows that but i used to think that social media was part of my job like i had to know exactly what was going on all the time i needed to know what everyone was posting but that's just not true sure it is nice for social media trends if you're making like reels and stuff and you want to know what sounds are popular if that is your strategy limit it to like a certain amount of time a day like 30 minutes of scrolling just in the reels and figuring out what sounds you want to use but for me personally i think that creating like my own reels not knowing what anyone else is making is so much more creative and and also better for my mental health. I also like not knowing what other artists are drawing. Don't get me wrong, I have a lot of friends in the art space and I follow and support each and every one of them. But it is the mindless scrolling through like the explore page or whatever that sucks you in. That is truly what's damaging. You become like so obsessed with all these people that you don't know and it's horrible for your mental health and for you as an artist. And what's even worse is that if you're an artist and you're feeling bad about your art and you can't draw and your small business has to do with your art, you're freaking screwed. Personally, I found that the best inspiration and motivation for me to draw is always outside of social media. And I didn't mean for this to become like a huge rant about social media but i do think in this day and age it is such like a huge part of comparison when it comes to being an artist it's not just the social media it's not just putting that down it's also a lot of internal work that you have to do yourself personally outside of just like limiting the amount of social media i'm taking in i've been working a lot on keeping things that are important to me at the forefront of my mind for me i am a very competitive person but i'm not competitive with other people i'm actually just really really competitive with myself i really don't like it when I know that I'm not going 100% at every moment of every day. So one thing that's important for me is that I'm always trying my best. Another thing that I keep at the forefront of my mind is that I want to live like a well-rounded life. That is what's most important to me, not how I'm doing in comparison to other people. Other people have other goals and it's easy to trick yourself into thinking that those are the goals you want with social media. Really sitting down and figuring out what you value and what your personal goals are and just like keeping that right at the front of your brain is so, so helpful. Like it's so easy to trick your brain into thinking that it wants things that you don't truly want. So just like trick it back the other way. Just figure out what you like and just keep it right at the front so you don't get tricked. Like a few months ago, I tricked myself into thinking I wanted this like flashy vintage car. When in reality, like when I came back from freaking La La Land, I came to the reality that I hate cars. I don't like driving. I also don't like being very flashy. So like what the hell was going on there? And I feel like that's probably enough yapping for this video and I, that's the last lesson I had anyway, so I truly don't have anything left to say. <laughs> But again, thank you so, so much for watching this video and all my other videos if you've seen them. Like a day doesn't go by where I don't realize that I only have this life because of you guys and because of the people supporting my art. So truly, truly, thank you so much. And I know I'm a big complainer, but just really know I am very grateful. I'm just also a huge complainer. I'm so sorry. But anyway, again, thank you for watching my video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Don't keep me down.